Hello again, and thank you for joining us again on this third episode of our series in Mortgage Notes. Today we're going to talk uh, a little bit about where the notes come from. I know we discussed that uh, briefly in our last uh, episode, but we're going to go into it in uh, a little bit more. Uh, we're going to talk about how um, I buy them, how a, a broker can buy them, investor, uh, and we're going to explain, for the most part, a partial and what that is. Uh, and um, hopefully you, you will enjoy it. So as we discussed last time briefly, uh, most of these properties are in the Midwest. Some of them are in California, some of them are in Florida, a few of them are in Arizona and around. And typically they're either originated by a small mortgage banking company that wants to sell them or uh, an individual. Uh, if um, an individual has a house that they want to sell, and their buyer can't get financing, then they can do what's called a seller carryback and originate that loan themselves. Now, you can ask, well, gee, why wouldn't somebody be able to qualify for a loan? Um, the main reason is that uh, they might be a foreign national, they might have a, a number of other loans themselves, um, or any number of reasons, and they could still be a perfectly good borrower but just not be able to get a loan. The other thing, and actually the bigger reason, is the fact that a lot of banks don't want to lend to people um, on loans this small. It's inefficient for them. Uh, anything below $60,000 a bank is limited to charging uh, two points on. Uh, two points on a $60,000 loan is $3,000, and from that, they've got to pay their uh, appraiser and uh, their loan officer and um, their processor and all these other people. Uh, plus, they don't get very much on the servicing uh, during the term of a loan. So they're just not all that interested. So these are difficult to get. Some banks do uh, grant them, but in large, uh, it's not that easy. So if Mr. Seller, John Seller, sells his property for $60,000 and uh, takes back $10,000, that means that he has a $50,000 mortgage that he originates to his buyer. His buyer uh, makes the payments to him as agreed, just like he would a bank. If it's a 30-year loan um, at X percent um, interest rate and uh, the payments are, say, $500 a month, then that's what he agrees to, uh, to make in payments. Now, uh, quite often, and during the term of these loans, two, three, four years, maybe longer, the seller decides that he really doesn't want to have this mortgage anymore. He has a, another use for that uh, money, wants to take a vacation, put his kid through school, invest in something else, whatever. He can sell the loan. Um, he can sell it to someone like me directly because I'm always uh, contacting a, a number of these people directly or he can go to one of the local exchanges and um, post it there. They have to sell them at a discount usually because if he has a 5% interest rate uh, on it, uh, there's little chance that anybody's gonna buy it and be able to resell it uh, to an investor for 5% or 4%. So they usually have to sell them at um, a, a discount at a much higher rate. Uh, and then somebody like me either holds onto them or um, sells them to uh, different investors. Now, we sell, um, or you can buy, the whole loan or uh, a part of the loan. And when I see a part of the loan, I don't mean uh, if it's a $30,000 mortgage that you're buying $20,000 of it. Um, that's not the case. You do see that quite often in larger loans in California, maybe in New York, where you've got an $800,000 mortgage and not a lot of people can afford $800,000. So what happens is um, maybe uh, investor one will take $100,000, investor two will take $200,000 uh, until you get enough investors to uh, invest or make up the balance of the entire loan and each per person is paid out on a pro rata basis. That's not really what we're talking about here. Let's say you had a 30-year mortgage, and uh, the borrower's been paying for 25 years. So you've got um, 
I'm sorry, borrower has been paying for five years and you have 25 years remaining. So you may not want to buy the full uh, 25 years. You may say, Richard, I really you know, don't think that uh, I'd like to have an investment more than 10 years. So what I can do is, is sell you that income stream, those mortgage payments, and uh, you will have full rights to that mortgage during that time. It will be assigned to you and you will be the complete owner and get all of the payments. Um, and I basically don't get anything uh, as a seller. Um, I will get something at the tail end, meaning after your 10 or 12 years, there will obviously be, if it's a 25 year loan, uh, there is uh, 15 years left. So I'll have the opportunity to go out and sell um, the remainder of that 15 years at that time. So a lot of people really like that because they think, well, um, if an investor is willing to sell me a partial and he doesn't get paid until the end, what that really means is that it's got to be a pretty good investment because he's thinking that uh, he's investing, number one, for his own pocket. He's got skin in the game and he um, really is looking for his benefit later on after I'm paid. So there's a smaller likelihood that you're going to get uh, a weaker loan for, for whatever reason. Uh, so that's why a lot of people like to buy partials. Plus, they don't care to have a, uh, re, you know, a, a 27 or 25 year investment, whatever it is. Now, one thing to remember is that a lot of people um, love to buy these through their self-directed IRAs. If you have a 401k, you can take from your W-2 type of job, uh, you can take a portion of that, you can take all of it if you want to, uh, and move it to a self-directed IRA company. Um, there are a number of them out there, and it's a very easy process. And you can then direct them to uh, buy a mortgage note. Now, you have to go out and find that note, you have to talk to somebody like me, and then I will facilitate that for you. But um, that's uh, how all of that is done. Your 401k itself won't invest in notes. They have to invest in properties that, I'm sorry, in um, uh, different stocks and bonds and things like that that are insured and uh, fall under the Securities Exchange Commission. And nothing that we're doing here today uh, follows under the SEC rules. This is all just a straight investment. Um, you would buy this like you would buy a stock, and you obviously don't need a license to buy a stock. You can just buy it outright. So that is an overview of how these are created, uh, bought and sold, and um, what a partial is as opposed to a whole loan. If you have any immediate questions, please don't hesitate to give me a call. Richard Thornton at 510-918-9001. And if not, I hope to uh, see you on the fourth of our series where we will talk about investing in mortgage notes in further detail. See you then. Thanks and bye.